I come to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. So, it's still early enough in the year that we are either attempting or denying our New Year's resolutions. Top among them, to lose some weight. And whatever the motivation for this effort, most of us are familiar with the weight loss lament. We have either witnessed it or been guilty of it. You know how it goes. You're having a meal out with a friend, and they comment, I'd really like to order that dish, but I'll just have a salad. I'm trying to lose weight. And then the meal is served, and they sigh deeply, looking longingly at your plate and the sumptuous meal before you. And then they begin to eat their plain salad. And at dessert, when your cheesecake is served, they talk about all the wonderful cheesecakes they've had in the past, and then say how happy they are with this glass of triple filtered water. But there's not an ounce of sincerity in their comment. The weight loss lament can haunt us as long as we see the sacrifice and miss seeing the light. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Now, the alternative to the weight loss lament is the habit of following a theme of healthy living. And so this isn't a self-help sermon, but bear with me on this analogy for a bit longer. Several weeks ago, I mentioned the idea of adopting a theme in your life rather than marking a line in the sand with the win-lose proposition of a New Year's resolution. And in this same situation, that meal with the friend would not have involved a weight loss lament. But a conversation about choosing this particular meal because it's such a healthy option, and that heartfelt comment of, and I have so much more energy when I eat healthy. And then the result is that several months later, when dining out again, instead of saying how you fell off your diet, your friend looks at you and comments at how svelte you look. Lord, you hate nothing you have made. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts. In the Lenten journey, we're called to study, prayer, fasting, almsgiving, and an inward reflection that helps us to see the Godhead in our own hearts. Lent is a gift of time for this journey of reflection. Lent is traditionally a time that we sacrifice, that we give up something we enjoy. And for this to truly be effective, first we must give up the notion that God is to be feared in the negative sense, rather than looked upon with a sense of awe. And we must give up the view that Lent is focused on self-punishment and degradation rather than a time to reorient ourselves to God. And we need to give up the view that God is anything but love. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. John O'Donohue writes, we live between the act of awakening and the act of surrender. Each morning we awaken to the light and the invitation to a new day in the world of time. Each night we surrender to the dark to be taken to play in a world of dreams where time is no more. At birth, we are awakened and emerged to become visible in the world. At death, 
we will surrender again to the dark and become invisible. Awakening and surrender, they frame each day and each life. Between them, the journey where anything can happen. Lent is our gift of time to look at our own awakening and surrender, our beginning and our end. And following the journey between them, where anything can happen. Creator God, we lift our hearts to you because you made the universe from nothing and formed human beings in your image from the dust of the earth. With God's hands, we were formed in God's own image. That is our awakening, that's our beginning, formed from the dust. Our journey is that we may come to resemble and follow our crucified and risen Savior, Our end, our final surrender, is that all God's church and the whole of creation will celebrate the wonder of God's love, the day when every eye shall see God and every tongue shall praise God. Lent is a gift of time, 40 days, so that we may look to see this wonder in our lives. Amen.